Good morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, Granite State School Districts get money for security upgrades. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. That these votes support the immune system? Mm. Too many choices? Well, along with digestive health, Floor Store provides an extra layer of immune support. Really? Mm-hmm. Unlike many other probiotics, Floral Store stimulates the production of IgA. IgA? Oh, IgA is a protein that promotes health and defense against infection. All right. I'll try it. Woo! See you later, ladies. <laughs> Be biotic with Floral Store. The Florida high school massacre has shaken the country, again, bringing school safety to the forefront. Security upgrades are already planned in New Hampshire. I know. And I believe, and I think you share that belief, that if we can't put our kids on a school bus and truly believe that they're going to be safe, then nothing else matters. Last month, yeah. Governor Sununu and the Executive Council approved more than $10 million in infrastructure projects at schools, most of that money going towards safety improvements. Sununu says close to 300 schools will benefit. In Salem, the middle school will have exterior door card readers installed. It's absolutely necessary today. Um, it, it, it just uh, helps put a little bit uh, more uh, peace of mind in, in, everyone's, uh, in everyone's head. $350,000 will be invested in Laconia. Through seven grants, several city schools will get new security cameras, door lock systems, two-way radio communication, and security film to reinforce glass. Which will solidify the windows and make them a little bit stronger and more of a deterrent effect. Police Chief Matt Canfield says every second counts. Anything we can do to slow the assailant down, to delay his response, delay getting into the school, delay doing his harm, is all minutes bought on the, on the law enforcement side of things and gives us time to respond and uh, to challenge the shooter. The Bedford School District sent a message to parents and staff saying it is constantly reviewing emergency response plans and is working with local and state officials to always be prepared. Live in the studio, Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Fire on side of highway leads to discovery of body. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. We had to be a ghastly discovery made just before 7 o'clock tonight, right across the street behind us. That's when Chelsea Fire and State Police responded to a brush fire along the shoulder of Route 1, running right between the elevated road and Route 16 below, where it crosses with Webster Ave. As the fire was extinguished, first responders then spotted what appeared to be a body lying in the charred shrubs, so they called the homicide unit. State police detectives attached to the Suffolk DA's office, along with Chelsea Police and the State Fire Marshal's office, also responded. Investigators say at this point the victim appears to be an adult male and that the burned body was found in an area frequented by homeless people. Detectives are now trying to determine how that fire was started, along with the cause and manner of the person's death and whether those two events are related. The DA will have an update in the morning trying to determine if this was a homicide or just a horrible accident. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. South 
Portland student in custody after making threats against school. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8 Maine. Megan, with those images and videos from yesterday's shooting in Florida, still so fresh in so many parents' minds, today was anything but routine. For many parents around the country, sending their kids off to school today was a little bit harder. In South Portland, learning about a threat at the high school sent many into shock. It was gut-wrenchingly awful, especially after what happened yesterday. And for administrators and law enforcement, today was a day to reevaluate what they are doing to keep students safe. They shouldn't have to worry about the things uh, like this, but unfortunately, we uh, in 2018, it's something that we have to be prepared for. Tonight, the Lewiston superintendent sending an open letter to parents and students in the hopes of easing anxieties to the best of his abilities. You want to have certainty that our schools are the safest place that a ch child can be. Um, in today's world, unfortunately, that's still not 100% guarantee. Adding that while copycat attacks are always a fear, all schools can do is be vigilant and prepared. In today's world, every threat needs to be taken seriously and investigated because one mistake is one mistake too many. The common thread between so many of these incidents, it's social media tonight. Many parents reminding their kids that if they see something, say something. Live in South Portland tonight, Erin Dixon, WMTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Corporate America gets behind immigration bill that Trump threatened to veto. The chief executives of some of the nation's biggest companies are publicly supporting a bipartisan immigration bill that the White House has threatened to veto. The latest eruption between corporate America and the Puglish administration. Florida suspect said he heard voices telling him to carry out massacre, sources say. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. Put Michaela the Prince used the Chase Mobile app to pay practically anyone at any bank, all while performing the grandest grand jeté. She could, but in real life she pays her sister for that sweater she stained. Chase, make more of what's yours. This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good afternoon, and we come to you live from Parkland, Florida at this hour, where we are expecting to hear from the sheriff here in Broward County as a new and darker portrait uh, begins to emerge in this case that took so many lives in the last 24 hours. We, of course, know that the suspect in this case, 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, was in court today, and we've learned quite a bit from not only his court appearance, but from the affidavit about his past, about what might have motivated him to commit such acts. Uh, and as you can see in front of the microphones, they are now beginning to gather, where the yeah, sheriff is expected to offer I more about the timeline. Earlier, Let's join. Okay, and here's a little bit of that video. If you want to watch that whole video, we will put that link on the Riley King Network Facebook page, and you can watch the whole video. The 19-year-old who is accused of killing 17 people and injuring dozens more when he opened fire on a South Florida high school Wednesday afternoon, told investigators he heard voices in his head giving him instructions on what to do to conduct the attack. 
law enforcement told ABC News. And that does it for the Riley King Newscast. Right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday. And I'll be back later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.